Welcome to Fignar Custom Models channel, where I show you how I customize scale model trucks. Today we're making a tandem axle flatbed truck out of a regular box truck model. This one is a Freightliner M2 by New Ray. You'll need a second model for a donor second axle if you're making a tandem. I will be using some supplies like styrene plastic to make the flatbed hardware and some paints. See the links in the description below for the specific supplies and tools that I use. I start by removing the box and begin disassembling the model by removing the screws to take the cargo box and bed off, and then removing the cab for painting if necessary. I'm replacing the cab with a red one I had from another model because it's an exact match for this customer's trucks. Remove the axle. I would skip the step if I was leaving it a single drive axle. I also removed the mud flat bracket to relocate it. After lining up the axles, I realized to fit a second axle, I'll need to cut the leaf springs to get the two axles close enough to each other. I cut the drive shaft and drill a hole to fit one into the other. do a test fit and then just adjust as necessary. I also mark lines so I can relocate the mud flat bracket. I'm using a band saw to cut a new notch for the mud flat bracket. After another test fit, make sure everything rolls okay. I'm then ready to attach the axle and the mud flat bracket to the chassis using structural epoxy. Next, I fill holes in the cargo floor with body filler putty. Once it's dry, I sand it smooth. After I sand it, I will cut a V-shape cut into the floor grooves into the putty. For a realistic wood appearance, I'm going to paint the floor yellow first, and I'll also paint the undercarriage of it a flat black. I'm adding a tread plate at the end of the floor, so I mask a straight line to shave the end to fit a piece of the diamond plate styrene. Using the bandsaw, I just shave off the end after marking it with the masking tape just to fit the diamond plate. I selected the acrylic paint I want to use to simulate the wood and use a leather base coat over the yellow. The leather brown base coat looks good between the boards, but another technique I could have used is to use a very thinned out black to only paint between the boards really show separation. If I did that, I would paint the floor grooves with the thinned black and then 
wipe the plate with a paper towel to remove any black from the top surface. Once I get complete coverage with the base coat, I then go on to blending the paints. I slightly blend the paints to have a variation in my brush strokes and not make it one solid color. Acrylic paints are ideal for this process because they dry quickly and we'll be using a dry brush technique to create the wood-like color variations between the flesh tone, leather, black, and yellow paints. Again, I'm just slightly mixing the paints to allow the color variation to show to more accurately resemble the wood. With a dry brush painting technique, I'm often dabbing the wet paintbrush into the paper towel to just have a minimal amount of paint on the brush, and this allows the yellow and leather undertones to show and look more like wood variations. Once I get to the top coats, I'm just adding a small amount of the different colors of paint and focusing on one board at a time then adding a little of another color and painting another board so that all the board sections don't look exactly the same. Once I'm satisfied with the wood look, I move on to adding the tread plate. I measure and cut the plate with the bandsaw. Then I just sand the edges smooth. I do a test fit to make sure that it's sitting flush or just slightly above the cargo floor. Then I'm ready to glue it together using the structural epoxy. Once the adhesive cures, you're then ready to reattach the floor to the chassis. Now I'm ready to move on to make the hardware, which I make from acrylic and styrene plastic to look like black painted steel, consisting of a bulkhead with supports and inner and outer rails. I cut the bulkhead plastic to size and the frame and supports from square rod and L-shaped pieces.
Using a plastic cement, I glue all the pieces of the bulkhead together. Because I was making two of these at the same time, I just line them up next to each other to get the same alignment of those vertical structures in the middle of the frame. With the bulkhead complete, I move on to the side rails. These consist of L-angle glued to strips to widen the piece that goes along the side of the cargo bed. I cut short square rod to create spacers between the inner and outer rail, and use strip styrene for the outer rail. Next, I cut the inner side rail pieces that were just glued together to 140 millimeters. I then mark and cut a notch in the side rail to fit flush against the tread plate. I then cut spacers using 5mm lengths from 2x2mm two two square rod styrene. I cut 18 to align with the 9 under 4 cross braces to speed up the build without having to measure the distance between each spacer. Now I attach the spacers to the other side. For the outer rail, I cut some 3.2 mil styrene to 140 millimeter lengths for both sides. I then glue the outer rail to the inner rail, pinching it in place with a vise then cement to the spacers and pinch the other end and glue that in place. Then repeat these steps for the opposite side. I 
again, you're seeing two sets because I was making two of these at the same time. You're going to hit it with some primer and hit it with some gloss black. I cut some score lines on the underside of this rail to allow the structural adhesive to hold better. I'm sanding the end of the cargo bed for the same reason, to allow better adhesion of the glue using. Once I test fit the pieces to the truck, I will replace the cab and attach all pieces with the structural epoxy. After removing tape from the pieces I glued on, I am ready to add the decals I've printed, such as the reflective tape, license plate, AIM mud flaps, and the trucking company name to the cab doors. After the decals, I'm ready to apply touch-up paint where necessary and rebox the model to present to the customer. Check out my other video for a variation of the flatbed truck with a third or tag axle. Post comments, questions below, and if you found any value in watching this type of instructional video, please like and subscribe. I am Don from Bignar Custom Model Videos, and I thank you for watching.